Welcome to Electron Line. Now, how does the voltage drop across devices when the devices are connected in parallel? So, let's figure out the voltage drop across a parallel circuit. So, here we have an example, two resistors in parallel, one that is 6 ohms, one that is 3 ohms, and there's a 24 battery pushing current through the circuit. We also have the circuit connected to ground. That means that at that point of the circuit, the circuit is at a potential of 0 volts which means since this is connected to ground right here, this has to be at zero volts, and this must also be at zero volts because that's also connected to ground and there's nothing, no devices in between the ground and that part of the circuit. On the left side of the battery, since we have a 20 volt battery, the left side must have 20 volts at that particular point in the circuit because that's what a battery does. It gives a voltage potential difference across the circuit. Now, if this is at 20 volts, that means this point right here must be at 20 volts. Now, if you take a look at this, if it's 20 volts on the left side and 20 volts on the right side, that means there's a 20 volt potential difference between those two points in the circuit. And since there's two paths to go from here to there, we have a pad over here to resistor R1 and a pad down here to resistor R2, that means the voltage drop must be the same across either resistor because somehow, the voltage drop has to be the same no matter which path you take from 20 volts to 0 volts. That means in parallel circuits, the voltage drops are the same on each branch that is in parallel. Here we have two branches in parallel, which means the voltage drop across each of those two resistors must be the same, must be 20 volts. That allows us to figure out what the current is through each of the two branches. Because using Ohm's law, we know that I is equal to V divided by R. And so since we know the voltage drop across each resistor and we know each resistor, we can find the current in each branch. So in this case, I1 must be V divided by R1 right here. And so the voltage drop across R1 is 20 volts and the resistance is 6 ohms. So 20 divided by 6 is 3.33 amps. So I1, the current in the top branch, is 3.33 amps. Now let's calculate the current in the bottom branch. So I2 is equal to V over R2, which is again 20 volts because we have the same voltage drop across either resistor, and we divide that by 3 ohms, which means that this is equal to 6.67 amps. So here we can see that the total current, oh, this should not be I1, this should simply be I, the total current I to the circuit is going to be equal to the sum of I1 plus I2. In other words, I splits up into two currents, and then the two currents come back together on the other side, and they turn back in the current I on the other side of the parallel branch. So we have current I going to this part of the circuit, I1 to the top, I2 to the bottom, and they come back to I, which means that the current I must be equal to the sum of the two. So I must be equal to I1 plus I2, which is equal to 3.33 amps plus 6.67 amps. So together, that is a current of 10 amp in the circuit. All right, let's see if we can verify that. So what we're going to do here is find the equivalent resistance of those two resistors. Since there's only two and they're parallel, we can use the product over the sum method. So this is going to be equal to 6 times 3. Notice I'm not writing the ohm symbols to make it a little bit cleaner. And in the bottom we have 6 plus 3, which is equal to 18 divided by 9 ohms, which is equal to 2 ohms. The equivalent resistance is equal to 2 ohms. Now we can use that to find the total current. We can say that I total is equal to uh, let's see, V over R, so V divided by R total, in this case that's 20 volts divided by R total, which is going to be, well, 2 ohms right there. So notice that, yes indeed, we have a total current of 10 amps, which is what we found right there. So that's quite interesting. Notice that everything should always check out, no matter which technique you use to find the current, the voltage drop, the voltage rise, or anything like that. So in this case, in a parallel branch, remember, the voltage drops across each component in a parallel branch must be the same, or each branch of a parallel branch must be the same, 
And notice that if we get the equivalent resistance, we can calculate the total current. And if we add the two currents here in branch one and branch two together, we should also get the same total current. And that means everything checks out. And what we just said must be correct. That's how it's done.